Hi everyone, Mr. Benjamin here, and today we'll be doing 2017 question 5. So let's get into it. So a student carried out some experiment to investigate the displacement reaction of four metals, copper, magnesium, cobalt, and chromium. Immediately, I know copper and magnesium's reactivity with respect to each other, but I do not know cobalt and chromium reactivity. All right? So we need to look at the experimental results. So over here, we can see that when I add copper to magnesium sulfate, no change occur. So I am very, very sure, and I already know actually, that magnesium is more reactive than copper. So magnesium above copper, right? And then we can see that copper has no reaction with cobalt sulfate. That means it is not able to displace cobalt and copper also cannot displace place chromium so cobalt cannot no reaction with magnesium no reaction no reaction it would mean that copper is the least reactive okay so now let's see magnesium since it's something that we already know so magnesium can displace copper right because a brown solid is formed uh, cobalt can displace also cobalt because a gray solid forms and chromium magnesium can also displace chromium so also gray solid form so I know that magnesium can displace all the metals, means magnesium is the most reactive metal. So now we need to decide between cobalt and chromium. If cobalt can displace chromium, cobalt is more reactive. If cobalt cannot displace chromium, cobalt is less reactive than chromium. So let's look at cobalt. Right? Let's look at cobalt with chromium sulfate, this one over here. So over here, we can see that cobalt cannot displace chromium. Right? I repeat, cobalt cannot displace chromium. That will mean that cobalt is less reactive than chromium. In order to confirm our uh, hypothesis, chromium and cobalt sulfate. So you can see that chromium can displace cobalt. So chromium displaces cobalt, you get the grey solid. So that means that chromium is more reactive than cobalt. So chromium is more reactive than cobalt. Okay, all right, let's take a look. Next one, magnesium sulfate solution is colorless. All right, so complete the table to show the colors of the other metal sulfates. So we are not really expected to know, right? So therefore we have to look at the table over here. So if we look at this, uh, so we know that um, copper, we know that copper cannot displace any of these reactions. That means there will be no reaction, right? So when I add copper to cobalt 2 sulfate, you see that there's no change and the solution right, remains pink. That means cobalt sulfate is originally pink. Let's look at copper with chromium 3 sulfate. Because copper cannot displace chromium 3 sulfate, chromium 3 sulfate will be in the end. So cro copper chromium 3 sulfate remains green, means that chromium 3 sulfate is green. So I know that cobalt 2 sulfate is pink, and I know chromium 3 sulfate is green. Then what about copper 2 sulfate? So this is something that you need to know. Right, because this is something we've been doing since sec one. Copper two sulfate is blue in color. All right, let's move on to the next part. So these are all displacement reactions, and they said that the displacement reaction is exothermic. Exothermic means energy is released. Exo exit, so energy released. So I need to draw an energy profile diagram of chromium and cobalt sulfate. So let's check chromium and cobalt sulfate. Did the reaction occur? Chromium, cobalt sulfate. Yes, reaction occurs. So it needs to be exothermic. So that means the energy should go down because energy release. I release energy, so I have less energy in the end. So I need to put something here, lower, and then my activation energy. All right. And then the names of the products. Before doing that, let's just 
label because we all know how to label this. Dotted line always from the rectum. We only draw one dotted line. All arrows pointed starting from the dotted line. So dotted line to the top, dotted line to the bottom. The arrow from dotted line to the top will be the activation energy. From dotted line to the line below, that will be the enthalpy change. And this is negative. Okay, now I need to know the names of product. So this is a displacement reaction. Chromium will displace cobalt. So chromium will take away the cobalt's position. So we do not know what's the oxidation state. So we can use uh, this oxidation state over here. Okay, so the question gives us chromium 3 sulfate. So I will just write here chromium 3 sulfate. And chromium 3 sulfate and the cobalt comes out. So cobalt metal. So these are my products. Okay, uh, we'll skip two for the ionic equation. And the last one, student added calcium to each of the salt solution and it observed fizzing. Immediately you need to think, fizzing means a gas is produced. But however, we think about it, a displacement reaction when we have a salt solution, it doesn't seem to create freezing. So that means there must be a gas produced. So what we need to know is that salt solution is actually salt plus water. Okay, it's a mixture of salt and water. So if you use the reactivity series, please stop calling me a cute zebra eye. Like when we do 4 4, we should notice that calcium over here reacts with water. Right? And when it reacts with water, it produces hydrogen gas. So the reason why there's freezing, it means that the gas is produced. So we can write that calcium reacts with water in the salt solution to produce hydrogen gas. Right, and that's how we answer 2017 question number five. So I hope that's helpful. Bye bye.